You've been waiting all week for that Saturday show. Tune in, see what happened, let your troubles go. Work real hard, now it's time to take it slow. Kick back and relax with that Saturday show. The city establishes a new crime panel. How to spend $170 million to keep people in their homes. Restorative justice needed now more than ever. Voting rights and investment in humanity, especially young humanity, limping along through legislative processes. Those topics, great poetry and music, all ahead on that Saturday show. Good morning, Albuquerque. I'm Jim Harvey, your host for another edition of That Saturday Show, brought to you by the Albuquerque Center for Peace and Justice, your voice and your advocate for social justice. We're celebrating 38 years of service, and as a nearly all-volunteer program, your donations are appreciated. So don't forget a couple of major events coming up at the Center. On December 3rd, on December 3rd, I'll say it again, on December 3rd, our Holiday Bazaar. Come on down to the center and get those hard-to-find arts and crafts that you want to give as holiday presents. And then on December 11th, our 38th Annual Gala. You can send donations, but above all, this is going to be a power-packed show starting on the 11th on YouTube, and it'll all be for you. We have a terrific lineup today, and as always, our goal is to inform, entertain, and make us all smarter together. But first, let me get this off my chest. I'm still asking the question, where the hell is my voting rights bill? I am thoroughly convinced that a combination of not voting in elections at all levels of government gave us the likes of Agent Orange Trump, the January 6th attempted coup, and a slew of right-wing judges determining the fate of many of us who are victims of the Confederate Party agenda. We can never miss a vote. I, I have to tell you that. That's what they want us to do. Yes, I won't stop calling the Republicans what they truly are, the Confederates. And they're still fighting the Civil War. With that said, a, diabol a diabolical plot to deny voters, black and brown in particular, the opportunity to make our voices heard is a plot that is well underway in as many as 40 states all led by Confederate Party members, and they're all hell-bent on preventing results like those in November 2020. Those Confederates are also doing everything they can to practice cancel culture in our education systems by first lying about critical race theory and what it really is, and by fielding candidates to take over school boards wherever possible. Watch out, Albuquerque. Each of us has a huge responsibility to get out the vote while educating family and friends and neighbors about the urgency of voting for democracy. We are being threatened daily by the steady march towards authoritarianism, and that will mark the end of liberty as we think we know it. I qualify the word liberty because it, too, is an uneven application of the democratic values. The fact that police still murder black people and face few, if any, consequences is no accident of the justice system. The fact that trials like the Rittenhouse trial in Wisconsin and the killers of Aubrey in Georgia just limp along and acquittals in both instances seem more and more like very real possibilities. And remember, Right here at home, there is still no movement on the Stephen Baca trial, and that hasn't even started yet and happened more than a year ago. The militias continue to operate in plain view, and the police pay them no mind, confident that there will be no appraisals for their lawlessness. 
All these things are part of a prescription for an authoritarian style of government where the only survivors will be the moneyed class. Don't be fooled either. When people tell you that New Mexico is a poor state, on the contrary, the state is loaded and you just can't get your hands on the money because of the system rigged against us. It all boils down to votes by the people and why the Confederates are determined to keep people like you and me away from the ballot box. Don't let it happen. Vote every time there is a vote to be cast. Our lives depend on it. Stay woke, folks. We've got in our studio today an incredible panel for our first series of topics. You know him, Tom Dent, the show's director, and the wonderful, fabulous, lovely Nicole Rogers, liaison to uh, the city's black community on behalf of the mayor of the city of Albuquerque. And welcome back, Nicole. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So <clears throat> we've got three things on the burner today. And I, I just read about this new crime panel that the, the city is enacting because on the heels of 100 murders in the city and other kinds of issues, um, you know, there's really this push to kind of get our heads around what to do about all of this. What do you know about that? I know that the, this is probably a product of the mayor's major crime initiative um, that we had just recently, um, where he brought all the leaders from all of the sectors, from legislators to public defenders to mm. the DA, all of the uh, police agencies, state police, BCSO, APD, um, everybody was at the table to talk about solutions to our, our violent crime problem. Um, and it was really great to see the brainstorming happening, and I was able to participate in a lot of those meetings and really be able to, and we actually had people in the room that had lived experience. I think that's, that's the that's key, is it's not just the folks that yeah. never have been in prison talking about you know, how to help folks coming yeah. out or how to um, you know, just get resources to folks, because that's really what, what is really, we know the root causes and that's what um, we're trying to aim to fix, is the root causes to the violent crime. Yeah. So things like our violent intervention program um, are doing amazing work just trying to make sure they get in and help the family, the whole family, after, uh, you know, after experiencing a violent crime and getting them access to resources so that you know, they have what they need, number one, and then they also don't retaliate. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And getting them those those resources that are desperately needed after a family deals with that kind of trauma. Yeah, and the public safety and the public <coughs> safety department are a lot more complex than we think. Yeah, the Albuquerque community safety. I'm really excited about that and happy. Speaking of voting, right, that our city voted to keep uh, Mayor Keller because these are initiatives started under him that he, we need time to see to fruition. And Albuquerque community safety is one that's. I can see a difference. I live in the International District and seeing how they're dispatched to help with social services and being able to actually connect them to resources. But like you said, don't be fooled. We still have gaps in those um, continuum of care that's needed to really help the root causes of the problem. Mm -hmm. And so once we can connect that with our uh, Gateway Center, um, mm. I think we're really going to see some changes um, that the community can feel. Sure. And like I've said on other shows, you know, it's a, uh, and, and with a study that just came out from Oregon and we've seen in other cities, it's not necessarily the equipment and the number of cops that you have on the street, it's the opportunity and involvement in the community uh, to, to lift people up through education, prosperity, and, 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 uh, and cooperation that actually reduces crime, not, not, not a thousand cops on the street. Yeah, and that's, I think, what our Albuquerque, our APD ambassador program is focusing on doing, is building those relationships with the community so we feel like we have a partner in trying to work together to make, because it's not just an APD problem. It's not just the city problem. We all have to take accountability for see something when you say something, step up. Um, speak up, and really, we have the power to take back our communities. Mm -hmm. you um, know, we could do it together. I'm a big advocate of prevention, mm -hmm. and you know, and I'm glad to see that we're moving in that direction. Because if we can get ahead of crime, 
and prevent crime, you know, we're in a lot better shape. And, you know, the money that you spend after crime is committed compared to the money that can be spent preventing the crime from happening in the first place, mm -hmm. you know, is there's a huge difference there. So, you know, again, restorative justice, for example, mm -hmm. I'd like to see pockets all over the city sure. where there are teams of restorative justice people that are part of every specific community mm -hmm. that are engaged in conflict mediation and crime prevention at that level as well. Yeah. And it would be a wonderful thing. So, you know, I'm, I'm glad that the, the city has designated the Peace and Justice Center and the Endorphin Power Company as sites, mm -hmm. you know, and all they need to do now is give us some resources so we can get that work done. But I'm glad to see that the city's moving in that direction so that um, we do, in fact, have more of a leaning toward crime prevention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we have to give a huge shout out to Tanya Covington, who's leading that at the city. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Gotta give her, because again, it's, we're oftentimes <clears throat> one person leading the charge. Yeah. And if we can you know, transfer her knowledge of restorative justice and these mediation practices that I've had the pleasure of learning from her, right, right we can really we can really give our, our community some tools yeah. to help resolve issues that come up in the community because it happens um, more than you think. And if we have people out there who can interrupt that cycle and give people tools to communicate with each other better, it'll help all of us all around. And, uh, you, know, uh, what, what, you know, like you were saying about the cost and the cost of incarceration as well. It's like people complain about the revolving door, but mm -hmm. a lot of times... They'll, they'll look at these communities and uh, low income drug and 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 uh, and, and burglar and, peop, uh, and people like that and uh, th they'll serve their time they'll get out on probation a lot of times they'll set things up so they go right back in the revolving door right back into the jail and prison cells yeah and that's mm -hmm. why it's important we have people with lived experience involved in these processes because yeah. they can tell us. You know, what, what do we need to do to support you so that you can be, um, you know, you can have a, a thriving life here. Mm -hmm. um, and and we do need to get rid of that, you know, just throw away our, you know, our people who, like you said, people who are in prison. And they're just, I see sometimes we just treat them as throwaways. Mm -hmm. Same with our elderly population. Like, That's right. There's a lot of. Yeah, same with our veterans. Yeah. You see a lot of stories on national news mm -hmm. about huge missiles, uh, 200 people with PTSD and traumatic brain injuries, and, and what, what's, what's the VA doing to help these people? A lot of these people give up on, on help and end up in the streets. Yeah. Yeah. Well, guaranteed recidivism. Mm -hmm. No place to live, no job, no income, you know, no ties to community, no connections with family members, you know, relatives, friends, neighbors, because of the fact that you've got no place that you can call home. Mm -hmm. Huge problem. And that's what leads to people going back into prison. They know that, let me go on and commit another crime because at least I'm guaranteed, as they used to say, you know, three hots and a cot. Mm -hmm. We don't want that. We want you out. We want you in the community. We want you as part of our families. Mm -hmm. We want you as our neighbors. We don't want you back in the prison system. You know, the prison system is guaranteed to feed itself at your expense, and we need to put a stop to that. So that means more resources. That means, on our next topic, rental assistance for, as one example. Yeah. You know, how do you keep people in their homes, in their apartments? And there's a lot that's happening on there. And so I, I applaud the city. I applaud the state for the push that's being made in order to get more boots on the ground, if you will, mm -hmm. to help people complete uh, the rental assistance uh, process, navigate that process so that they, uh, in fact, can stay in their homes. Yeah, it's a big deal. We know the housing crisis in Albuquerque is a huge um, you know, factor. We know, And we know from all the research that stable housing 
right, is the foundation for our families. And so rental assistance applications are absolutely something that we're pushing right now, trying to get the word out. The state, the city, and the county have all received funding up to $170 million right. circling in our state right now that can go directly to help families ensure that you don't that you're not becoming unsheltered. Um, it's for so we have three different pockets of uh, applications that are available. So we have one for rental assistance, which will pay up to 10 months of rent directly to your landlord wow. and utilities. Mm. Uh, the second one is for relocation assistance. You know, for the folks we talked about that are reentering, this is a perfect one for them. Um, it'll pay first months, last months, deposits, and three months worth of rent ahead mm. um, to give you a foundation. Then we also have the hotel assistance. Um, we know that there's not enough housing units available for people who need them. And so some folks definitely, until they can find that stable uh, apartment then or home to rent, then we can help them with some hotel assistance. But but some landlords aren't even taking the rental assist, assistance money. And some landlords who have Section 8 apartments are trying to shut that down and move their tenants out. Mm -hmm. And it amazes me, it shouldn't amaze me, uh, with the city's... Uh, lack of foresight in the past because they mm -hmm. can be kind of controlled by NIOP and the realtors and uh, people like that. But why don't we have the foresight to build affordable housing for such conditions as they come up? Yes. And the good thing is, is that's exactly what we're going to do. The mayor just announced $300 million in resources that will go to affordable yeah. housing. That's great. So deal. we know we, people were upset about the stadium and the $50 million to, to, to that that could go to you know affordable housing. But really, three hundred million has been allotted for that. And but the thing is, is it, it's needed now, and it's going to take yeah. some time for those things to be built and to mm -hmm. be done. So we definitely need more partners to come online and to make sure we can help build those quickly. Um, and the other thing I know, after meeting with our legal department recently, they're actually working on some resolutions or things that can, um, some actual laws that can help hold landlords accountable for illegal evictions and things that are also plaguing our community. Um, because there is a little loophole with, hey, it's my private property, I can do whatever I want with that property. Yeah. Right, and that's what there are, is not really any built in fail safes for that right now to hold people accountable for that. And that's what we need as well as the funding to build more units. Do we have a department like we used to have for uh, substandard housing and substandard apartments where they, uh, they condemn them and try to go after these landlords and find that they lived in uh, California, Illinois or, Arizona, or, or California you know, or something yeah. like that? And, you know, then people like, I, I guess at one point, Pete Dinelli was leading the charge to knock down a lot of these uh, yes. dr drug infested. Uh, Mm -hmm. Rat and cockroach infested yeah. substandard housing. Yes, and the city just demolished one of those in the International District just two weeks ago. Yes. And so the, yes. that was a big one where we saw, like you said, a lot of loitering, um, folks using it for encampments and that kind of thing, which brought a whole other host of issues as well. So there is still those processes um, going on in the city, and, and the mayor's actively going to make sure we can hold those accountable and, and demolish them if that's the case. But, you know, that takes time as well. But we've definitely been doing that Great. as well. So we've got a little under two minutes left, and there's one thing I wanted to get to, and that is vehicles whereby we get the word out to people and get assistance out to people. And yes. one of the things that excites me is block parties. Yes, our community block parties. Yes. So this came out of sitting in the Metro Crime um, Initiatives, um, kind of brainstorming with my colleagues in the Vi Violence Intervention Program, um, in APD, our ambassador program, and really thinking what can we do to dispatch resources directly to the community. We oftentimes make our, our community come to us for resources. <laughs> And so what we're doing is we're launch we've launched at the beginning of October uh, community block parties that are focused on just that, bringing resources you can get plugged into on the spot. So we're doing on the spot rental assistance applications. We can do SNAP benefits on the on the spot. We have some new pr uh, primary care offers in this in the city that are coming in and offering to put people on primary care panels right mm -hmm. away. Even we'll pick you up for your appointments. We have um, all the city departments that are coming out, like you can meet the new Albuquerque Community Safety Department, what resources are available so you know to ask for them by name 
um, if you encounter a social service or want to call for somebody that you see down on the street, maybe, or just different thing, host of things like that. Um, we're really excited to be doing this because we're leveraging our city spaces like our community centers on Saturdays from 12 to 3. Various different um, locations you can go to. You can find the list of all of those on our website, the city's uh, equity and inclusion website. You can also go to renthelpnm.org for the rental assistance applications. But if you click on events, you'll see all of our community block parties listed there. Um, so that we know community members can know where to get help with these rental assistance applications. Nicole <laughs> Rogers and Tom Dent, thank you so much for this panel. We've, we're out of time. We could keep going <laughs> on all this, day, right? but we've got to go on. But the good thing about it is it's good news. Good news. And speaking of good news, let's go to Hassani with Good News News. My favorite. All right. <laughs> Thank you, and welcome to Good News News. I'm your correspondent, Hassani Olujimi, and I'm Goo Goo for Good News. The goal of this segment is to inspire and uplift you, the viewer, with nothing but good news. Our two stories come from our good friends from somethinggood.com. Our first story is titled, On the Road Again. Not Willie Nelson style. <coughs> Let's learn a little bit more. Isn't that good news? Let's explore a little more with stress relieving art. Not the man name art, I mean art on the wall that you can look at. Let's take a look. I, I really do love this city and I hope it shows. A love that's spreading around the River City through art. Scotty Cousin has been making art for nearly 45 years. Since 2020, Cousin's nature-themed sculptures, sand, and chalk designs have taken on a new meaning. People that are having problems like uh, uh, people with sickness, uh, dementia, uh, a lot of other different things that, things that happen in life that aren't so nice, uh, their relatives reach out. Uh, hospitals have reached out to, to kind of augment the surroundings a little bit to create a smile and uh, to, to lighten their load a little bit. What kinds of things do you hope people feel when they see your artwork across the city? I hope that they feel a lot less uh, burden on their shoulders, where it may, kind of gives them a little pause and, and uh, makes someone feel that someone's thinking about them other than all the serious stuff that you have to think about during the day. Now, isn't that good news? Now, as a kid, I used to get into trouble a lot and always had to go stand in the corner. Well, today, I get to write my own rules. Now, when I go to the corner, it's the comedy corner. Come with me. Let's take a look. A teacher asked her student, what would you do if a tiger was chasing you? The little boy said, I'd climb a tree. The teacher said, well, tigers can climb trees. The little boy said, then I'd jump in the lake and swim away. The teacher said, tigers are really good swimmers. The little boy said, hey, are you on my side or the tigers? 
A mother asked her son, what'd you do in school today? We played a guessing game. I thought you had a math test. Yeah, that's what the teacher called it too. <laughs> the teacher said, why are you boys arguing? The little boy said, we found a $10 bill and decided whoever could tell the biggest lie could have the $10 bill. The teacher said, I'm ashamed of you. When I was your age, I never told a lie. The little boys looked at each other and handed the teacher the $10 bill. <laughs> As we always say, the best way to turn a frown upside down is to get Google for good news. I'm your correspondent, Hassani Olajibi, and I'll see you right here next time on That Saturday Show with more, you got it, good news. What's happening with our incarcerated youth? How do we stand up for them? How do we make certain that when they get caught in the law, what happens as a result is if we can't keep them out of jail, that their sentences are fair? We've got with us today two heroes in my book from the Coalition for Fair Sentencing for Youth, Eva Buckwald, Hi. And Abby Long, welcome to that Saturday show. Thanks, thank you All for right. having us. Yo, this is you know, there's such good news that's happening, and I just wanted to have you all in here to just share that with us. So, Eva, tell us what's going on. Well, I think I would like to start by saying today is a very auspicious day yes. to have us on because um, Henry Montgomery, the namesake of a very important Supreme Court ruling. Um, in 2016 that followed on the heels of a ruling in 2012. So in 2012, the Supreme Court made a ruling um, banning life without parole for juveniles. Mm. You can't sentence them. Bravo. And so then uh, Mr. Montgomery's case in 2016 made it retroactive. And Bravo. so around like 800 people um, benefited from that mm. decision, except Mr. Montgomery. Wow. He had gone to parole several times since then um, and was not granted until today. Hmm. So at the age of 75, after 57 years, um, he finally got to walk out of prison. That's great news. It is great, great news. news. Long time coming, but it's great news. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that, they, that uh, a lot of this had to do with his campaign uh, over the years to... Uh, uh, Reduce sentences and make sure that this, you know, that this retro, that it was ret retroactive. Well, I mean, who knows what the yeah. special secret was about today? Um, but certainly, the issue of young people that have um, been given extreme um, sentences mm -hmm. um, has really um, taken off. People are really becoming much more aware of it and realizing we don't want to live in a country that does that to kids. That's right. So, That's right. uh, you know, and we're hoping that that will have a big impact in what we're trying to do yeah. here. Yeah. Abby. Yeah. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks. Talk to us about your experiences that brought you to this work. Thanks. Um, yeah, I actually came to this work when my 14-year-old was facing the very real possibility of spending the rest of his life incarcerated. Mm. Um, I, you know, also didn't, I, I didn't know that that was something that we did. <laughs> So that was, you know, very eye-opening, yeah. and um, slowly but surely, um, I started to meet others that were, you know, kind of not necessarily having the same exact experience as me, but had loved ones that were incarcerated um, for life and very lengthy sentences for things that they did as a child. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I would say out of, you know, just learning that there were others, um, our kind of little grassroots campaign really formed. Um, really with just, you know, impacted family members. Um, I think that, you know, this legislative work that we do is amazing and it's important, but I think another kind of arm of our work is really just providing a safe space and support for families. Um, that's, you know, kind of first and foremost what um, this group kind of is for me. Um, is support and we continue to get new members and we now have members like I would say all over the country um, yeah. you know we just keep growing and keep growing 
and you know whether it's someone with an incarcerated loved one or just someone who really cares like we have like the most amazing group that just continues to get bigger and bigger mm -hmm. so we have so much support and we're able to really provide a lot of support also that's that's that that in itself is 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 great news that it's spreading like that you know i've been a, a fan of alternative sentencing for such a long time you know because i i'm just convinced that nothing good comes from locking up a kid nothing good comes from it you know even if it's for a day nothing good comes from locking up a kid you know but and when you start talking about you know fair sentencing you know if that is where we are you know then you know let's do that so what are some of the achievements that uh, that uh, uh, we can talk about today well <laughs> um, I'll talk, I can talk about one, and then you can. Okay. There you go. Um, um, a, a very important one was the um, New Mexico Parole Board mm -hmm. hadn't made any changes to their rules. Um, I can't remember the exact, but it's been like over twenty years. Mm. And so, um, sort of the, one of the fearless leaders of our group, um, a very new lawyer who's just done amazing work, Denali Wilson. Um, was able to really collaboratively negotiate with the parole board. So they did make a rule change this past year that for any person that is going before the parole board who was sentenced as an adult when they were young, they are entitled to have certain things happen at that hearing. They can have representation, they can present mitigation, um, they need to consider age at the time of the crime and certain um, protections that weren't there. And all him. that's new? Yes. You mean this, <laughs> you know, I know, it's I mean, that's mind blowing. <laughs> right. You know, right. that you'd bring a kid up in front of a bunch of stodgy old, you know, com mm -hmm. so-called community members, you know, who are just stuck in their ways and you expect this kid to be able to speak for his or herself you know, in, 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 in uh, petitioning for parole or probation or anything else, and no representation there for them? Well, these, you know... It's crazy. It is crazy. And the way it works is, like, these kids are now, like, in their 30s and 40s, and because you can't... Um, the sentences the majority of people have gotten make it so that they can't even appear before a parole board mm. until they've done 30 years day for day. Amazing. So, yes, yeah, so you go in as a 15, 16, 17 year old, you must do, you know, 30, 30 years. years. So, even though you are chronologically a grown up, you're still that you're same still person. You're still that same yeah. kid, you know, you are. I agree. Well, I, I'm glad to see that that change has happened. Yeah. And you've got one as well. And I think your reaction, I mean, I think raising awareness about a lot of these things is like a huge piece of our work too. And we get that reaction a lot, I think, when we're talking to the community yeah. um, that we're, you know, giving children life sentences. And, you know, like it's just raising awareness is a big mm -hmm. piece of what we're doing. Um, so I would say another big success we had was um, the legislative session last year was really, really successful. Um, we actually got our bill introduced. It was SB 247. Mm -hmm. um, and we got it passed um, pretty much on both sides until the very end. Was it the House? Yeah, was it the House. Yeah. It died on the House floor with a lot of other really good legislation just because it ran out of time. Um, yeah. So, you know, I think that, you know, even though it didn't get passed, like it was just, it was simply because. We ran out of time. Like, if it had been heard, it would have been passed into law last year. Um, so I think that's a huge, I call that a, a success still. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because really it has a, just been a grassroots movement of impacted family members. So, so I was talking earlier today, uh, and we're going to have uh, Devante Watson on uh, later in the show, who was talking about the short session that's coming up. And I know that that tends to focus largely on budget issues. Uh, so, because this bill ran out of time, you know, what's the traje a trajectory, can't get that word yet, you know, <laughs> what's the trajectory for, uh, for the future in terms of getting it out there and pushing it across the finish line? Yeah, um, you mean for this session? Yeah. 
Yeah, so, so we're still doing, you know, work. We've had, you know, meetings, and it was actually endorsed by the CCJ committee. Good. Um, so we're still, you know, doing work, um, but, you know, for it to be heard, um, it will have to be on the governor's call. On the governor's call, right. Um, yeah. And, you know, but I do think that this is a budget issue. I, yeah. You know, when you really think about it, and I don't think we brought the correct, like, statistics and pie charts with this, but, you know, I would, I would like to think that, you know, well, it's, there's no doubt that we would save a ridiculous amount of money um, by releasing people that cause no threat to, you know, the community. But also, I mean, I think in our state, there's such a lack of resources and preventative, like, you know, interventions mm -hmm. for youth mm -hmm. um, that I, I think, you know, if we, <laughs> it just seems pretty obvious to me that we could restructure the way we're spending money. Um, and it, it definitely is a budget issue. You know? Yeah, it, it it sounds like it's a budget issue, but it's a budget issue only because there's not enough will in the legislature yeah. to appropriate the funds that are necessary, you know, to make these things happen the way they should. Yeah, it's yeah. not a budget issue in the sense that we're not asking for money. <laughs> right, right, right. But you save so much if you right. do things yeah. right. You know, we were talking about that in the earlier segment. You know, that that's such an important piece. So. <clears throat> Uh, so is there a possibility then that this might be on the governor's call list for January? Well, there's always a possibility of anything, yeah. right? I mean, you have to we like, have learned that. <laughs> you have to like live, like live in hope, yeah. you know, um, so that would be the number one goal. Okay. And if not, we just are just forward momentum because we won't stop um, right. because it's people's loved ones that are inside. It's young people that continue to be um, sentenced as an adult, yeah. as adults. So. Yeah, I, don't, I know I don't want to live in a community like that. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So I think that, you know, whether it's on the call or not, like that doesn't change like what we're doing. And, you know, I think raising awareness and changing hearts and minds mm -hmm. is like kind of part of our campaign, you yeah. know. Um, yeah. So that work can be done regardless of what kind of legislation is happening, sure. you know. Sure. So is there anything that, that, that the community can do to get a message to the governor saying, all right, come on, this is an important issue because he's, this is our kids. Right. You know, in, in, in most instances, we're talking about our kids, mm -hmm. even though some of our kids have grown up, right. they're still entitled to the same benefits of, of this legislation being passed. Can we get this message to the governor saying, put this on the call list? It almost made it. Let's get it on the call right. list so we can get it passed. Yeah, that's a really good um Really good question. <laughs> and we, you know, basically, um, we have our core group and we, we kind of collaborate and work with our bill sponsors and stuff. And I think whenever there is the right opportunity for the community to engage and like, you know, to, to, for everybody to make those calls, we do send out kind of calls to action to our, you know, our, our members. Okay. And we do that basically through um, kind of our email blasts or, um, on social media sometimes as well. Mm -hmm. So I think um, just kind of getting engaged with us mm -hmm. um, in one of those ways um, is how you how you know the community can can help. Right. <laughs> yeah, and on a, a different, like a maybe more a micro level, mm -hmm. is to continue to educate yourself right. on this issue so that when you hear maybe your friends or community members or other people maybe misspeaking or saying things like, "Well, all kids, you know, they need to." If they've done the crime, they need to do the time, or how else will they learn? Um, as you educate yourself on the issue, then you can correct the misinformation that's out there. So on December 8th, we're having a, a workshop on um, legislation, how understanding the legislative process in the state, and we're inviting people you know, from different groups that have interest in getting legislation passed, you know, to come to this workshop. It's going to be a, a virtual workshop, but I'd like to invite you all to be a part of it, and I'll get the invite to you, because I think people need to hear, you know, what you're doing, for one thing, and uh, there'll probably be some people that would want to sign on, you know, to, you know, to helping to push this effort uh, farther ahead. So my last question to you in this last couple of minutes we have And is, by the way, that's a yes. We would love to participate. Excellent. <laughs> All right. We've, we've got about a minute and a half left. My next final question to you is, you know, what's next on your agenda? Where are you headed? 
Oof, like it's, once this passes, you mean? Yeah. Because this will pass. Yes. Well, I have like a personal thing that I'm interested, that I think would be really cool. Well, there's yeah. two parts, and when Abby can talk about is like supportive reentry and stuff. It's not just enough to get people released, but how do you do it in a caring, compassionate way? Um, something I would just like to put in the universe, is there something called a felony murder rule mm. that sweeps up a lot of young people in this situation? So it, if you are, like if the three of us are together and one of us commits an act that takes the life of another, all three of us can get the same yeah. Yeah. Um, charge and the same consequences for that. Um, and there are states around the country that are trying to work on changing that. And that, because, you know, young people do things in groups, right? Like, you are frequently hanging out together, you know, or a girl under the influence maybe of, like, a partner or something. Mm -hmm. So that's um, one mechanism that has swept up a lot of um, young people that end up with these extreme sentences. So that's what I would like to have next out there. That's going to keep you busy. <laughs> yeah, and then I know you wanted to maybe talk about You've got about 30 yeah. seconds. Okay, yeah, so I think, you know, um, just like Eva said, um, like when these folks are coming back, like, you know, resources and supporting people's reentry. Um, and also, I think something that I'm really passionate about is just more restorative practices in general. Absolutely. Built into our kind of these systems. Mm -hmm. they're, it's my personal experience, like, the, they're so, like, there's just not healing involved in any of these processes. We just got to make it happen. Yeah. Abby Long, Eva Buckwell, thank you both. Coalition for Fairness in Sentencing for Youth, for Fair Sentencing for Youth. Thank you both for joining this program. Well, thank you for having us. All right. And now on stage, we proudly present our own Tom Dent with a poetry tour. Take it away, Tom. Thanks, Jim. Back in the late 80s and early 90s, I canvassed for about five years all around the state on environmental issues. Uh, a lot of times we canvassed up in uh, Los Alamos and made a lot of money because these uh, uh, well-educated people up there, not in addition to making weapons of mass des destruction, uh, felt very guilty about the environment and, and other things. So this is kind of a, a nuclear, nuclear waste tour of New Mexico. It's called New Mexico Remembers the 40s. On a high canyon-cracked mesa at the tail end of the Rockies, surrounded by mountains and the Culandera, the lush bowl, that stunning beyond fertile remnant of six super sunken volcanoes, sits a city invented in Washington, D.C. On a vast desert alkali, alkali plain cut southwest by the San Andres, Watched and mourned by Salinas Peak is a marker where the first one went off. Stopped at a traffic light at Oppenheimer and Trinity in the middle of the high-tech federal weirdness of the town of Los Alamos National Laboratories. We're the most brilliant people in the world. Bring all your problems to us. So... You have environmental specialists and dozens of Caltech MIT grads. Well, what exactly happens beyond your houses at those abrupt dead ends that form into strange deep black hole arroyos casting sickish green glows in the night? And just who are those cancerous old melting people who answer the door and disappear when I ring? I swore I saw spacemen in silver hazmat suits, far below at the Rio Grande, pouring some kind of liquid from metal containers into the water. But what do I know? You're the experts. So I'll gladly be leaving now. You've got more than enough on your hands with your radio telescopes, to all that global lamps, military tactics, plot plotting, lasers, computers, ashes from Japan, and all that nuclear waste you generate that's now rolling down in true packs down I-25, joining Sandia Labs, Idaho, and Rocky Flats, 
through Santa Fe, all safe as it trucks down through my hometown, down, down, to that huge hole in the ground. Kirtland, NORAD, and SAC might protect you and your families as you smile and tour our great state. But just make sure as you visit that little marker, but ju just make sure as you do, remember to visit that little marker that stands between you and the whip. So you're watching that Saturday show and joining us now is one of our esteemed board members of the Albuquerque Center for Peace and Justice who chairs our legislative committee. Very important, particularly because um, the state's legislative session, which is a short session, begins in January here in New Mexico. And um, Devante Watson, uh, who chairs our committee, is gearing up now to provide some very valuable information and training, if you will, around the process and how to make it work for you. So welcome, Devante Watson. Thank you for having me. And just like you said, uh, we're preparing to gear up for the legislative session in uh, New Mexico by constitution. There is a cycle of uh, longer sessions and these uh, upcoming 30 day sessions, the 30 day sessions last in, are in uh, even numbered years. And with that, uh, there's a certain type of legislation that is uh, germane to the legislature and per constitution, what is considered germane is anything budgetary related and also anything at the call of the governor. Uh, in the legislative training, we'll go over and highlight what uh, both sessions are, what they accomplish, and what to anticipate this upcoming session and how to get involved. There are certain things that the community can do, budgetary related, like submitting requests for funding uh, for significant projects and uh, capital outlay in, in projects, uh, you know, collaborating with a state government, and we'll go over all of that in the training. Uh, that's fantastic. So since it's a short session and and what is that a 30 day session? Correct a 30 day session. So since it's a short session, then will there be much activity in terms of the introduction of new legislation? Or will they be spending most of their time focusing on legislation that that came to the fore and didn't get very far for any number of reasons just last year? Well, I don't think that we'll see a large number of uh, legislation that didn't get through last session again, uh, that comes up in this session again, uh, what is considered germane is anything budgetary related and uh, what is at the call of the governor, what is currently uh, in discussion is crime uh, and that directly relates to uh, uh, the concerns of the Albuquerque Center for Peace and Justice is how to deal uh, with crime and, and creating peace. So that will be most likely heard as a part of uh, other pieces of legislation in addition to budgetary uh, legislation this upcoming session in January 2022. So I heard that, I just heard recently, just read somewhere recently that uh, of the $1.7 billion that the state of New Mexico is getting from the federal government as part of the recovery uh, program, that um, some of the state legislators have sued and won uh, up through the state Supreme Court to have their say in, in how that money is going to be spent. Um, will that affect any of the, the plans that, that the governor or that any of the agencies in state government may have? I believe so. And this was uh, something that just came out uh, and, and rendered by the state uh, of New Mexico Supreme Court. I think that we will see uh, significant changes in the type of legislation and how um, uh, legislators will be approaching legislation uh, in this upcoming session, given the significant issues that have come up with crime. Great, great. So 
What's the training session going to look like? We will have guest speakers uh, from the community to be announced. So stay tuned. Please go to the Albuquerque Center for Peace and Justice website to learn more and to register what you should anticipate and expect us to gain knowledge, foresight, and understanding of the type of sessions and how to get involved, learning this, the rules, the procedures, and the processes on how to act on, a, uh, on your particular issue. Uh, we won't center the a lot of the conversation about the the issue areas of the center or the issue areas of the community. Uh, however, we will equip the community to to take those uh, resources and to apply them to issue areas to expand knowledge uh, and uh, to expand impact around those certain issue areas. So that's what uh, you can expect. And it will be on December 8th at six o'clock. It will be one and a half hour training. So it will last uh, until 730. Uh, and with that, we will gauge, you know, really from the audience, uh, what more they want to learn and, and possibly turning into uh, further sessions down the line. Uh, we invite everybody who is listening and who is interested to join the uh, Albuquerque Center for Peace and Justice Legislative Committee. Uh, we are actively seeking membership uh, for the committee to take charge in the issue areas of the center and also around issue areas that we see arising. Uh, it's a really fascinating committee and it's a yeah one that just jump started we're excited about uh the possibilities that are likely to come out of the committee so i know that you've done quite a bit of work in 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 legislation um at the state level in particular and uh so uh, i think we're going to be in good hands since you know your way around that process you know probably better than a lot of people do and and so you to be commended for that now will this be uh, a virtual session, a hybrid session, in-person session, or how are we going to do that? We are looking to do it uh, all online, and we ask that people go to the website and uh, uh, for the Albuquerque Center for Peace and Justice website to register so that we could send you materials in advance to review for the, for the training. Uh, and the, all of the registration information will be posted to the website and also social media for the center. Fantastic, fantastic. All right, okay. So, um, as I was saying, I, I'm, I'm really appreciative of uh, what's happening here. And I think that this is gonna be a very powerful session. And we look forward to um, people coming and participating and learning everything they can because we tend to take for granted just what the legislative process looks like. So this is going to shine light on some things and better equip us in the community with that knowledge. You know, we can't turn our backs on getting smarter. Devante, thank you so much. And uh, as he said, contact us at the uh, Albuquerque Center for Peace and Justice through our website, www.abqpeaceandjustice.org to get the link so that you can become an active participant. Thanks again, everybody. And now back to the studio. Me up is a couple things I want you to understand. First off, you chose me, so you recognize the skills. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. 2012 flow. 25 to life, baby. LA and Mr. Music. The places that we've been, you never seen them, yo. The places that we've gone, ain't been explored. Internet explore, no fire fox. Google Chrome couldn't find out where we going, Doc. Great Scott, quick it up to 88. Let's go back to the past, not a future too great, man. It ain't ever late. I'm sorry for the way, cause we brought the spaz. Chicago on the jazz, call LA Fresh Prince. You know I'm Jazzy Jab, man. I'm Kobe on the beat. And you can call him Shaq, call Karma Uncle Phil. Uncle Phil Jack, son. You ain't never heard me rap like that, son. Penitentiary flow to the maximum. Models all upon me, maxim. Who the illest in the shot, man? Ask him. Stanley Ip can shoot with my mask on. Yeah. 
I ain't wheezy or gambeezy or breezy, but I'm in my zone. I'm just E.T. coming home, and I don't need no cellular phone. Patiently waiting like M.M. 50 till they put me on. I know I got it, but this industry on. I'm insane in the cranium, but your brain to be blown. If you put these headphones on, then play me in your dome. I'ma have you feeling like a groundhog without a home. It's just a game of shadows, come and find me, we could battle. I swear I'm such an animal, eat these battles like animals. Cause y'all yo dirt. And I am Joe Dirt Long head don't care I leave the way like I'm a chauffeur And I don't smoke dirt I'm just high on life No soaps little mama But I'm guiding light I'm a lighthouse These other rappers night lights Call them Tinkerbell Or maybe Cinderella Why they always gotta whine Like they in a the cellar Y'all late I'm on time Set your clocks better Hate to say the darndest things Are a link letter And my flow tight Like I shrink sweaters Straight shot of Patron Now I think better Lots on my mind Trying not to lose it Lots full of cars Buying them's the future Slot machines Lotto tickets Life is a gamble It's 50-50 chances Two door handles Which you going open And which you going close There's never been a better time The decision is yours A split second choice Can change the course of history Hope Father Time is on my side Dad, I know you're Yo, listening Guess what? Today it's my birthday But I want to live life every day Like it's my birthday And I don't want this music shit Like in the worst way So I'm gonna keep on grinding Till it's my hurt Day. Married to the music, till death do us part Yeah, I married myself, cause love's super harsh And the only thing that's worth fighting for Is to reach the highest level, grand me awards Supports, 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 supports. Waiting for the day I finally step up to the podium They know I've been half flows like linoleum But I'ma never be the one for you to step on Used to be a nerd but now I'm cool, call me Stefan Put me in the booth, watch how I change up We chase greatness forever, you never change us Me and music got the Grammys in the same tux Exact same one that Bruce Wayne gave us Batman and Robin, dynamic duo Put the cards away, homie, we ain't talking Uno When the chips are down and friends ain't around It's just me and my brother All we got is each other and we bout to go ham Lettuce and tomatoes, trying to build my future up I ain't talking Play-Doh and I ain't talking toys when I'm yelling Lego Money, euros, pounds, pesos All I know is it's really about time We get paid like a baller cause you know we dropping dimes New music every Monday and it's fire every time We ain't signed yet, bring the alarm cause it's a crime Until the next time, it's time to say goodbye. When you out here in the streets, keep it real, 505. We love everybody. We just want to let you know. Thanks for tuning in to that Saturday show. <laughs>